Our first word is studio. Studio. S T U D I O. Studio. That is correct. Our next word is tasteless. Tasteless, T-A-S-T-L-E-S-S, -S, tasteless. Alex, can you say, spell that again and this time really, really loud for us? Put the mic like right next to your mouth. Tasteless, T-A-S-T-E-L-E-S-S. -S -S. Tasteless. That is correct. All right. The next word, is, it has a homonym, tennis. It is a noun, a typically outdoor game that is played with rackets and a light elastic ball by two players or pairs of players on a level court divided by a low net. Tennis. Tennis. T-E-N-N-I-S, tennis. That is correct. All right. Our next word is sturdy. Sturdy. S-T-U-R-D-Y, sturdy. That is correct. Next up, this word could be confused with a similar word, freckle. It is a noun, a small brownish spot in the skin, usually due to exposure to sunlight, freckle. Oh, can you repeat the word again, please? The word is freckle. OK, freckle, um, F. R E C K L E freckle. That is correct. Our next word is shamrock. Shamrock. Can you give me the definition, please? The definition is any of several plants having three leaflets used as a floral emblem of the Irish, shamrock. Shamrock, S-H-A-M-R-O-C-K, shamrock. That is correct. Our next word is target. Could you please use the word in a sentence? Xander hopes to meet his sales target this quarter. Target. Target. T-A-R-G-E-T. -E target. That is correct. Our next word is onion. Can you give me the meaning, please? It is a widely cultivated plant that has a slender hollowed, hollowed tubular leaves and an edible rounded bulb, is notable for its strong, sharp smell and taste, and is widely used as a vegetable, onion. O. N. I. O. N. Onion. That is correct. The next word could be confused with a similar word, grumbling. It is a verb expressing dissatisfaction, especially in a low, harsh voice and surly manner, grumbling. Grumbling, G-R-U-M-B-L-I-N-G, grumbling. That is correct. Our next word is apron. Can you use it in a sentence, please? 
Absolutely. Ms. Peterson likes to wear her special red and green plaid apron while she cooks Christmas dinner. Apron. A apron. A-P-R-O-N. Apron. That is correct. All right. Our next word is beagle. Can you use the word in the sentence, please? Vivian took Snoopy, her pet beagle, for a quick walk before lunch. Beagle. Thank you. Beagle. B-E-A-G-L-E. -E. Beagle. That is correct. Our next word is owlishly. Can you repeat the word? Absolutely. The word is owlishly. Owlishly. O-W-L-I-S-H-L-Y. Owlishly. That is correct. All right. Our next word is kidney. Kidney. K-I-D-N-E-Y. Kidney. That is correct. For our next word, this word has a homonym, raven. This one is an adjective. A large, glossy black bird that is widely distributed in northern parts of the northern hemisphere is omnivorous and somewhat predaceous and is larger than the closely related common crow, raven. Raven. R-A-V-E-N. Raven. That is correct. We've reached the end of round two, and all of our spellers are moving on to round three. I don't know about you, but I feel like I need a deep breath. <sighs> I mean, this stuff is stressful, guys. All right, but here we are. We've made it to round three, and we're going to start off with our first word. And our first word, this word has a homonym. The word is bias. It is a noun. It is an inclination of temperament or outlook. Prejudice. Bias. Uh, bias. B-I-O-U-S. Bias. It is incorrect. The correct spelling is B-I-A-S. All right, moving on to our next word. This word has a near homonym, badger. It is a verb to harass, pester, or bedevil persistently, especially in a manner likely or designed to confuse, annoy, or wear down, badger. Can you use that in a In a sentence, it is, Judge Jones has little patience with prosecutors who badger witnesses. Badger. Badger. B-A-D-G-E-R. Badger. Can you please repeat the word with the mic next to your mouth, please? Badger. B-A-D-G-E-R. Badger. That is correct. All right. Moving along to our next word. This word has a homonym, reckon. It is a verb. To conclude on the basis of a calculation or estimation, reckon. Can you use that in a sentence, please? Ragnar was quick to reckon that he receives at least seven texts a day from his best friend. Reckon. Reckon. R E 
C K O N. Reckon. That is correct. All right. For our next word, this word has a homonym, uncle. This is a noun, the brother of one's father or mother, uncle. Uncle, U-N-C-L-E, uncle. That is correct. Our next word is foothills. Um, can you please repeat the word? The word is foothills. Uh, can I have the definition? A hilly region at the base of a mountain range. Okay, and this is a plural noun? It is a plural noun. Okay. Um, foothills, F-O-O-T-H-I-L-L-S, foothills. That is correct. All right. Our next word is wasp. I have a definition, please. Any of numerous winged hymnopotorous insects that have well-developed wings and biting mouth parts and a more or less formidable sting. Wasp. Wasp. W A. S P wasp. That is correct. Our next word is snippet. Snippet. S N I P P E T. Snippet. That is correct. All right. Our next word is talent. Can you repeat the word, please? The word is talent. Can you put that in a sentence, please? Sterling's talent for basketball is a combination of natural ability and years of diligent practice. Talent. Talent. T-A-L-E-N-T. Talent. That is correct. All right. Our next word is erode. Erode. E R O D E. Erode. That is correct. All right. Our next word is hazelnut. Can you use that in a sentence, please? Vladimir sprinkled the last few pieces of chopped hazelnut on top of his ice cream sundae. Hazelnut. Hazelnut. H-A-Z-E-L-N-U-T. Hazelnut. That is correct. Next up, this word has a homonym, mince. It is a verb, to cut or chop into very small pieces, mince. Mince, M-I-N-C-E, mince. That is correct. Thank you. For our next word, this word could be confused with a similar word, kiwi. It is a noun. A flightless New Zealand bird that is about the size of a domestic chicken and has weak and undeveloped wings, stout legs, and a long, straight, or slightly curved bill. Kiwi. Can you repeat the word? The word is kiwi. Kiwi. K-I-W-I. Kiwi. That is correct. All right. For our next word, this word could be confused with a similar word, divine. It is an adjective, meaning supremely good or admirable. Divine. Divine. D-I-V-I-N-E. That is correct. 
all right? Our next word has a near homonym, ignite. It is a verb, to set a flame, to cause to burn, ignite. Ignite, I-G-N-I-T-E, ignite. That is correct. That's the end of round three. We have 13 spellers moving on to round four. I see there was a request in the chat for someone to please check Alexander's headset before we start the next round. Can you hear me? Does that sound better, judges? Alexander, can you move it right next to your mouth? Like this? That's better. That's better. Try again. That better? Yes. Don't move it. <laughs> All right, if we're all set, judges, we're all good. Fantastic, all right. Moving on to the next round. Our first word is legacy. Legacy, L-E-G-A-C-Y, legacy. That is correct and we could hear you great, so good job. All right, moving along. Our next word is splurge. Can I get the definition, please? The definition is to indulge oneself in some unusual activity, expense, pleasure, or luxury. Splurge. Splurge. S P L U R G E. Splurge. That is correct. Our next word is votive. Can I get the definition, please? Undertaken or performed in fulfillment of a vow. Could you repeat the word, please? Votive. Votive. V-O-T-I-V-E. Votive. That is correct. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, brazen. It is a noun. Any of various grapes dried in the sun or by artificial heat containing a high sugar percentage and having a flavor quite different from that of the fresh grape, raisin. Uh, okay, got the part of speech. It is a noun. Okay, um, raisin. R A I S I N, raisin. That is correct. All right. Our next word is newbie. Newbie, may I have the definition, please? The definition is a person who has recently started a particular activity, a beginner. Newbie. Newbie. N E. W B I E newbie. That is correct. All right. Our next word is spreadsheet. Can you please use that word in a sentence, please? Caroline used a color to fill the columns in the spreadsheet, so it was easier for her to see different data. Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. S P R E A D S H E E T spreadsheet. That is correct. 
All right. This next word could be confused with a similar word, penguin. It is a noun. Any of various short-legged, flightless aquatic birds of the southern hemisphere, penguin. Can you put that in a sentence, please? The zoo held a birthday party for its oldest penguin. Penguin. P E N G U I N. Penguin. That is correct. Our next word is a scribe. The definition. The definition is to refer especially to a supposed cause, source, or author, to assign or attribute. Ascribe. Ascribe. A S C R I B E. Ascribe. That is correct. Our next word is nephew. Can you put that in the sentence, please? Griffin took his nephew to the zoo for the afternoon. Nephew. Nephew. N-E-P-H-E-W. Nephew. That is correct. All right. Our next word is trumpet. Add the definition, please. A valved brass instrument having a cylindrical tube with two turns, a flared bell, and a cup-shaped mouthpiece. Trumpet. Trumpet. T-R-U-M-P-E-T. -E Trumpet. That is correct. All right. Our next word is levity. Can I have the definition, please? Excessive or unseemly frivolity, lack of fitting seriousness, levity. Levity, L-E-V-I-T-Y, levity. That is correct. All right. Our next word is moisture. Moisture, M O. I S T U R E. That is correct. All right. Our next word is toughness. Toughness. T O U G H N E S S. Toughness. That is correct. That's the end of round four. 13 spellers are moving through to round five. Judges and our pronouncer, before we continue, we have lost connection with speller number two, Alexander. Um, by the rules, I believe, judges, I'll defer to you, but I believe we can continue with this round and he's got 10 minutes to reconnect and then we'll give him a word. Would y'all like to wait or would you like to continue at this point? We can move on. Um, can someone set a timer? And so that at the end of, if the round happens faster than 10 minutes, then we can continue to wait the 10. I have our him, official, I our have official day fall is keeping off. time. I have him dropping off at 1040. So at 1050, he is out. So I will keep an eye and see if he gets back on. 
So judges, just to be clear, you'd like to begin this round. And even if this round concludes past 1050, if he's, if Alex It looks Sanders like he's trying on, to get back on now. Yes, we feel like that's fair. Okay. Then we can begin round three with speller number three. He's back on now. Are we beginning with speller three or is where are we going with speller two? Uh, judges, back. I'll let you make that decision. He's Alexander, back. if you'll unmute, I just want to check your audio, make sure you're still with us. Is it, am I good? I believe so. So we will begin round three with speller number two. Here we are at round five. Excuse me. Oh, God. All right. I can spell. I can't count. Sorry. All right. This next word has a near homonym, jealousy. It is a noun, a disposition or state of mind that is suspicious of rivalry or unfaithfulness, or that is apprehensive of the loss of another's devotion, jealousy. J E A. L-O-U-S-Y, jealousy. That is correct. All right. Our next word is vouch. Could you use it in a sentence, please? Absolutely. Rosemary calmly told the detective that she had several people willing to vouch for her whereabouts on the night of the crime. Vouch. Vouch. V O U C H. Vouch. That is correct. All right. Our next word is shoulder. Shoulder. S H O U L D E R. Shoulder. That is correct. All right. Our next word is butterscotch. Okay, can I have the definition, please? The definition is the flavor of brown sugar and butter cooked together. Butterscotch. Butterscotch. Um, can you please repeat the word? Butterscotch. Okay, butterscotch. B U T T E R S C O T C H. Butterscotch. That is correct. All right. Our next word is Amazon. Amazon, may I have a definition, please? One of a race or nation of female warriors, usually associated with Scythia or Asia Minor, with whom the ancient Greeks of mythology repeatedly warred. Amazon. Amazon. A M A Z O N. Amazon. That is correct. All right. Our next word has a homonym, boorish. It is an adjective, meaning a characteristic of or relating to a rude, clumsy, insensitive, or boring individual, unrefined, boorish. Can you please use it in a sentence? Embarrassed by her date's boorish behavior, Christina ended the evening as soon as possible. Boorish. Boorish. B-O-O-R-I-S-H. Boorish. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, quart. It is a noun a vessel or measure having the capacity of the U.S. unit of liquid capacity equal to one quarter gallon or 57.75 cubic inches, quart. Could you use that in a sentence, please? Nadia picked up a quart of milk from the store on her way home. Quart. 
court, Q U A R T, court. That is correct. All right. Our next word is imbibe. Can I get the definition? The definition is to consume by drinking, imbibe. Imbibe, I-M-B-I-B-E, imbibe. That is correct. All right. Our next word is lactose. Can you use that in the sentence, please? Jaza cannot easily digest lactose, but he can still enjoy pizza as long as it's made with vegan cheese. Lactose. Lactose. L-A-C-T-O-S-E. Lactose. That is correct. All right. Our next word is domineering. Could I have the definition, please? The definition is disposed to exercise or to flaunt dictatorial authority in a way to override any protestation. Domineering. Can you repeat the word, please? The word is domineering. D-O-M-I-N-E-E-R-I-N-G. Domineering. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Our next word is abandon. Can I have the definition? To give up by leaving, withdrawing, or ceasing to inhabit. Abandon. Abandoned? Can you repeat the, the word? The word is abandon. Abandoned. A B A N D O N E D. Abandoned. That is incorrect. The correct way to spell the word is A B A N D O N. Abandon. All right. Our next word is nervily. Could you repeat the word? Nervily. Can I have the definition? In a manner showing calm courage, nervily. N E R V I L Y. That is correct. All right. Our next word is bristle. Bristle. May I have the definition, please? A short, stiff, coarse hair. Bristle. Bristle. B R I S T L E. Bristle. That is correct. That's the end of round five. 12 spellers being through to round six. Before we begin this round, I'll just remind all spellers that when you are spelling, please hold your hands up so the camera can see them. Thank you. All right. With that, we begin round six. The first word could be confused with a similar word, thawed. It is a verb. Became free of stiffness, hardness, numbness, ice, or other effect of cold as a result of being warmed. Thawed. Thawed. T-H-A-W-E-D. Thawed. That is correct. All right. Our next word has a homonym. Nay, it is a verb. To make the loud, prolonged calling cry typical of a horse. Nay. Nay. N-E-I-G-H. Nay. 
That is correct. All right. For our next word, this word has a near homonym. Formalize. It is a verb to render something exact, methodical, or orderly, to stylize, formalize. Formalize. F O R M A L I Z E. Formalize. That is correct. All right. Our next word is dwindled. Um, can you repeat the word? The word is dwindled. Dwindled. Um, can I have the definition, please? Became steadily less, diminished in size, amount, or quality. Dwindled. Okay, dwindled. And can I have the part of speech? It is a verb. Okay, dwindled. D-W-I-N-D-L-E-D. -E dwindled. That is correct. All right. Our next word is spinal. Spinal. May I have a definition, please? The definition is of, relating to, or situated near the vertebral column, spinal canal, or spinal cord. Spinal. Spinal. S-P-I-N-A-L. Spinal. That is correct. All right. Our next word is veteran. Could you please use that in a sentence? The Army veteran shared her experience during the Gulf War. Veteran. Veteran. V-E-T-E-R-A-N. Veteran. That is correct. All right. Our next word is kudos. Can you give me the meaning, please? It is praise given for achievement. Kudos. Can you put that in a sentence, please? Ivelisse received kudos from the drama coach after her performance in the school play. Kudos. Can you repeat the word one more time, please? Mm -hmm. The word is kudos. Kudos. K-U-D-O-S. Kudos. That is correct. All right. For our next word, this word could be confused with a similar word. Chia. It is a noun. Any of several plants of Mexico and the southwestern United States with seeds from which a beverage can be prepared. Chia. Chia. C H I A. Chia. That is correct. All right. Our next word is bogus. Can you use that in the sentence, please? It turned out that the report Tanya handed in was full of bogus information she found online. Bogus. Bogus. B-O-G-U-S. Bogus. That is correct. All right. Our next word is remedial. Can I have the definition, please? The definition is concerned with the correction of faulty study habits, the improvement of skills imperfectly learned, and the raising of a pupil's general competence. Remedial. Remedial. R-E-M-E-D-I-A-L. Remedial. That is correct. Thank you. Our next word has a near homonym, fraught. It is an adjective. 
meaning burdened or menaced with, fraught. Fraught, F-R-A-U-G-H-T. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Our next word has a near homonym, sandal. It is a noun. It is a shoe consisting essentially of a sole fastened to the foot by means of straps or thongs passing over the instep and around the ankle. Sandal. Sandal. S A N D A L. Sandal. That is correct. round six, 12 spellers will be moving through to round seven. All right, I really feel like we need some theme music. Can anybody quickly compose something as we go from one round to the next? Maybe we can steal something from, I don't know, Wheel of Fortune, I don't know. Is copyright infringements be thrown out the window, it'll be fine. Anyone? No? Okay. In that case, we're just gonna go ahead and start with seven without theme music, or we can just hum one in our own minds. All right, round number seven. Our first word is tolerable. Tolerable, T-O-L-E-R-A-B-L-E, -E -E, tolerable. That is correct. All right, our next word is muscular. Muscular. M U S C U L A R, muscular. That is correct. All right. Our next word is genetic. Genetic. G E N E T I C, genetic. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, burial. It is a noun, the act of disposing of a corpse, usually by placing it in a grave. Burial. Um, burial. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Burial. Okay, um, burial. Um, and can you repeat the word again, please? Burial. Okay, burial, B-U-R-I-A-L, burial. That is correct. All right, our next word could be confused with a similar word, lettuce. It is a noun, a common garden vegetable, the succulent leaves of which are used especially in salads, lettuce. Lettuce. L E T T U C E, lettuce. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word Americana. It is a plural noun. It, it means materials as literary or historical documents and relics distinctively bearing on, concerning, or characteristic of America, its civilization, or its culture. Americana. Americana. Could you please use it in a sentence? Aunt Gladys has an impressive collection of Americana that includes a road sign from Route 66, two original Norman Rockwell illustrations, and a set of 1950s postcards from national parks. Americana. Americana. A M E R I C A N A, Americana. That is correct. All right. Our next word is gargantuan. Uh, could you repeat the word, please? Gargantuan. Could you put that in a sentence, please? 
The seemingly gargantuan gorilla in the movie was actually a four foot high model. Gargantuan. Can you give me the part of speech, please? Uh, this is an adjective. Can you repeat the word, please? Gargantuan. Gargantuan. G A R G A N T U A N. Gargantuan. That is correct. All right. Our next word is iteration. Iteration. I T E R A T I O N. Iteration. That is correct. All right. Our next word is illusionist. Illusionist. I L L U S I O N I S T. Illusionist. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, celery. It is a noun. One of a cultivated variety of herbaceous plants with leaf stalks that are eaten raw or cooked. Celery. Celery. C E L E R Y. Celery. That is correct. All right. Our next word is gymnastics. Gymnastics. G Y M. N A S T I C S. Gymnastics. That is correct. All right. Our next word has a homonym tongue. It is a noun. A process of the floor of the mouths of most vertebrates that serves especially for taking and swallowing food and as the principal seat of the sense of taste, tongue. Tongue. T-O-U-N-G-U-E, tongue. That is incorrect. The correct way to spell the word is T-O-N-G-U-E, tongue. That's the end of round seven. Um, what, one speller is out, so we have 11 spellers moving on to round seven. Well, in the absence of our theme song, we just continue on to round eight for our first speller. All right. Your word is recoup. Can you use that in a sentence, please? The company was fortunate to recoup their first quarter losses by expanding their product offerings. Recoup. Recoup. R-E-C-O-U-P. Recoup. That is correct. All right. Our next word is orchestra. Could you use that in a sentence, please? The orchestra impressed the audience with its performance of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Orchestra. Orchestra. O R C H. E S T R A orchestra. That is correct. All right. Our next word is fortification. Fortification. F O R T I F I C A T I O N. Fortification. That is correct. Our next word is jubilant. Can you repeat the word, please? Jubilant. Jubilant. Got the definition. 
It is manifesting or expressing exultation or gladness. Okay, jubilant, J-U-B-I-L-A-N-T, jubilant. That is correct. All right. Our next word is combination. Combination, may I have a definition, please? A series of events or results occurring in an ordered sequence, combination. Combination, C. O M B I N A T I O and combination. That is correct. All right. Our next word is intellectual. Could you please use that word in a sentence? The guidance counselor told the student that she should embrace being an intellectual. Intellectual. N T E L L E C T U A L. Intellectual. Caitlin, can you give us one minute, please? Caitlin, that was correct. All right, moving on to our next word, recipient. Can you repeat the word, please? Recipient. Can you put that in a sentence, please? The principal shook hands with each recipient of the school's annual awards. Recipient. Recipient. R E C I P I E N T. Recipient. That is correct. All right. Our next word is shebang. Can I get the definition? It is the establishment, contrivance, affair, concern, thing. Shebang. Shebang. S-H-E-B-A-N-G. Shebang. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, pilferer. It is a noun, one that takes articles of small value, a petty thief, pilferer. I get the definition, please. The definition is one that takes articles of small value, a petty thief, pilferer. May I use it in a sentence. The pilferer of pencils and paper from the office supply closet was identified on our surveillance video. Pilferer. P O oh, P I L F E R E R. Pilferer. That is correct. All right. For our next word, it could be confused with a similar, whoops, sorry. It won't be confused. I was looking at the wrong one. For our next word, it is rollicking. Can I have the definition, please? The definition is having or expressing a carefree joyousness. Rollicking. Rollicking. R-O-L-L-I-C-K-I-N-G. 
L I C K I N G, rollicking. That is correct. All right. Our next word is bachelorette. Can you, can I have the definition, please? A young unmarried woman, bachelorette. Can you use it in a sentence? Molly planned to celebrate her final days as a bachelorette by spending quality, quality time with her friends and family, bachelorette. Bachelorette. B A C H E L O R E T T E. That is correct. That's the end of round eight. We have 11 spellers moving through the round nine. Before we begin the next round, I have good news. It's time for a bathroom break. If everyone will please leave their cameras on, just so we don't lose anybody, but we'll take about five minutes to get up, stretch our legs, and then we'll continue.
Okay, we are going into round nine. Kaylin is on the way back. She had an emergency real quick. <laughs> Understood. Thank you. All right, before we begin, I'll just ask our judges and record keepers to take a look, make sure all our spellers are back and in place, please. And I think we are good to go. If we are, I will turn it back over to our pronouncer, Patrick Gallagher. All right, without further ado, we begin round nine. All right, our first word has a homonym, calendar. It is a noun, a list of events or activities giving dates and details of planned events, calendar. Calendar, C-A-L-E-N-D-E-R, calendar. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is C-A-L-E-N-D-A-R, calendar. All right. Our next word is pharmacy. Could you use it in a sentence, please? Tim got a text message from the pharmacy indicating that his prescription was ready to be picked up. Pharmacy. Pharmacy. P H A R M A C Y. Pharmacy. That is correct. Our next word has a homonym, carpal. It is an adjective relating to the wrist, carpal. Carpal, C-A-R-P-A-L, carpal. That is correct. Our next word has a homonym, allegiance. It is a noun. 
It is devotion or loyalty, especially to a person, group, or cause, entitled to obedience or service and respect. Allegiance. Okay. Um, allegiance, kind of the part of speech. It is a noun. Okay. Um, allegiance. Can you repeat the definition again? The definition is a devotion or loyalty, especially to a person, group, or cause, entitled to obedience or service and respect. Okay. Allegiance. A. L L E. Actually, can I restart? You can oh, yeah. restart. You just can't um, change the letter order. Yeah. Okay. Allegiance. A L L E G I A N C E. Allegiance. That is correct. All right. Our next word is agnostic. Agnostic, may I have a definition, please? Wait, can you pause? Can you repeat how to say that word again, please? I messed up. Listen again. Agonistic. So the definition is seeking to overcome in discussion or debate, argumentative, agonistic. Okay. Can I have a part of speech? Absolutely. The part of speech is adjective. Agonistic. Agonistic. Am I saying that right? Agonistic? Okay. Agonistic. A-G-O-N-I-S-T-I-C. Agonistic. That is correct. All right. Our next word is occupancy. Did you please use that in a sentence? The contractor promised the owners that their house would be ready for occupancy in two more weeks. Occupancy. Can I please have the definition? The definition is the condition of being resided in. O C C U P A N C Y occupancy. That is correct. All right. Our next word is condensation. Uh, can I have the meeting, please? The definition is transition of a substance from the vapor to the liquid phase as steam to water, condensation. Condensation, C. Uh, can I have the word please? The word is condensation. Condensation, C-O-N-D-E-N-S-A-T-I-O-N, -E -E condensation. That is correct. All right. Our next word is amnesty. Amnesty, A-M-N-E-S-T-Y, amnesty. That is correct. All right. Our next word is herringbone. May you say that word again, please? Sure. The word is herringbone. May you use it in a sentence, please? Ina claimed the herringbone on her mom's new suit made her dizzy. Herringbone. H A R I N. Say the word again, please, sir. Herringbone. H A R I N G B O N E, herringbone. That is incorrect. 
The correct spelling is H-E-R-R-I-N-G-B-O-N-E, -R -R -E, herringbone. All right. For our next word, obscure. Can I have the definition, please? The definition is not readily understood, lacking clarity or legibility. Obscure. Obscure. O B S C U R E. Obscure. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Our next word has a homonym, eminent. It is an adjective, meaning conspicuous or noteworthy, eminent. Could you repeat the word, please? The word is eminent. Can you use it in a sentence? The National Cathedral is a building of eminent beauty. I M M I N E N T. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is E M I N E N T. That brings us to the end of round nine. Um, three spellers are out of this round, so we have eight spellers moving into round 10. All right, here we go into round 10. Our first word of round 10 is sobriety. Can we make sure speller three knows that it's their turn? Hi, speller three. Would you like me to repeat the word? Yes, please. Sure, no problem. The word is sobriety. Sobriety. S O B. R-I-E-T-Y, sobriety. That is correct. All right. Our next word is uncouth. Could you repeat the word, please? Uncouth. Uncouth. U-N-C-O-U-T-H, uncouth. That is correct. All right. Our next word is steroid. A okay, steroid. Uh, can you give me the definition, please? Any of a class of compounds that are characterized by the polycyclic structure that is usually include the sterols and vitamin D, as well as many other naturally occurring compounds. Steroid. Okay, steroid. S T E R O I D. Steroid. That is correct. All right. Our next word is tibia. Tibia. May I have the definition, please? The definition is the preaxial inner and usually the larger of the two bones of the vertebrate leg or hind limb between the knee and ankle and in many forms more or less fused with the accompanying fibula. Tibia. Am I saying that correct? Tibia? The word is tibia. Tibia. T-I-B-I-A. Tibia. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word. Angora. It is a noun. A yarn of the hair of a long-haired, usually white rabbit 
used, especially for knitting, Angora. Um, could you please use that word in a sentence? Luna was thrilled to receive a handmade sweater made of Angora for her birthday. Angora. Angora. A-N-G-O-R-A. That is correct. All right. Our next word is bureau. Can you repeat the word, please? The word is bureau. Can you put that in a sentence, please? Casey carefully folded his clothes and put them away in his bureau. Can you tell me the part of speech, please? The part of speech is a noun. Can you tell me the origin, please? This word is probably from an element of non-Indo-European origin that passed through Latin and French before entering English. Bureau. Bureau, am I saying it right? The word is bureau. Bureau. B-U-R-E-A-U. -E bureau. That is correct. Our next word is circumflex. Circumflex. C-I-R-C-U-M-F-L-E-X. Circumflex. That is correct. All right. Our next word is armaments. Armaments. Could I have the definition, please? The definition is weapons and accessory equipment of a combat or defense unit, armaments. Thank you, armaments, A-R-M-A-M-E-N-T-S, armaments. That is correct. Thank you. That's the end of round 10. All eight spellers will move through to round 11. Happy. Armaments, like... Never heard of it. All right. Spellers, we have reached the portion of the competition now that we've finished round 10. Uh, the portion of the competition where we are moving into a different section of the list. The words leading up to now were studied as part of the 2022 Words of the Champions. The source for the remaining rounds will be Merriam-Webster's Unabridged. Although the next section of words might sound less difficult, you have not had the opportunity to study this list of words prior to today's competition. All right. So here we are beginning with our new set of words. The first word, hamburger. Hamburger, H-A-M-B-U-R-G-E-R, -E hamburger. That is correct. Our next word is tadpole. Tadpole. T-A-D-P-O-L-E, tadpole. That is correct. Our next word has a near homonym, bladder. It is a noun, a membranous sac in animals that serves as the receptacle of a fluid or contains gas, bladder. A bladder, oh, can you repeat the word? Bladder. Bladder, okay, can I have the part of speech, please? It is a noun. Noun. Maybe bladder, B L A D D E R, bladder. That is correct. All right. Our next word is troublesome. Troublesome. May I have the definition, please? The definition is giving uneasiness or anxiety, disturbing, troublesome. May I have a part of speech? This word is an adjective. 
troublesome. T R O U B L E S O M E, troublesome. That is correct. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, tomorrow. It is an adverb meaning on or for the day after today, tomorrow. Could you please use that word in a sentence? Aisha vows she will do her homework tomorrow. Language of origin. This word is originally English. Tomorrow, T-O-M-M-O-R-R-O-W, tomorrow. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is T-O-M-O-R-R-O-W, tomorrow. All right. Our next word is toiletries. Can you repeat the word, please? The word is toiletries. Can you give me the meaning, please? The definition is articles or preparations as soap, lotion, cosmetics, toothpaste, shaving cream, cologne, used in the process of washing, grooming, and arranging oneself. Toiletries. Can you give me the language of origin, please? This word consists of a part that went from Latin to French to English, plus an English combining form. Can you repeat the word, please? Toiletries. Toiletries. T. Uh, yeah, I'm going to repeat the word, please. The word is good. Go ahead. Toiletries. T O I L. E T R I E S, toiletries. That is correct. Oh my God. All right. Our next word has a homonym, limb. It is a noun, and it means a leg or arm of a human being, limb. Limb, L I M B, limb. That is correct. All right. We always have to remember our jazz hands, people. Keep your jazz hands up while you're spelling, please and thank you, yes. All right. All right, moving on to our next word, eventually. Add the definition, please. At an unspecified later time, in the end, at last, finally, ultimately, eventually. Thank you, eventually. E V E N T U A L L Y. Eventually. That is correct. That's the end of round 11. We have seven spellers moving on to round 12. All right. Here we are moving into round 12. Our first word could be confused with a similar word, brininess. It is a noun, the quality or state of being like water saturated with common salt or like seawater, brininess. Could you repeat the word, please? Brininess. Brininess. E-R-I-N-E-I-N-E-S-S, -E -E brininess. That is incorrect. The correct way to spell the word is B-R-I-N-I-N-E-S-S, -S, brininess. All right. Continuing on with our next word, it could be confused with a similar word, warlock. It is a noun, 
One given to black magic, sorcerer or wizard, warlock. Warlock. W-A-R-L-O-C-K. Warlock. That is correct. Our next word has a homonym, ought. It is a verb used to express moral obligation, duty, or necessity, ought. Hey, ought. Could you please do it in a sentence? We ought to write a nice note of thanks to our hosts for their hospitality, ought. Okay, um, ought, O-U-G-H-T, ought. That is correct. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, BOGO. It is a noun, a sales promotion in which an item is offered free or at a reduced price when another item is purchased at full price, BOGO. BOGO. Can I have a part of speech? This word is an acronym formed from two originally English words plus a word that passed from Old Norse to English, BOGO. BOGO. What else can I ask for? You can ask me for the part of speech or you can ask me for the definition again, or I can use it in a sentence. Can I have a part of speech? The part of speech is a noun. Okay. Bogo. B O G O. E. Bogo. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is B-O-G-O, -O, BOGO. All right. Our next word could be confused with a similar word, dingle. It is a noun. It is a small, secluded, well-wooded ravine or valley, dingle. Can you put dingle in a sentence, please? Uncle Alistair has fond memories of spending endless hours as a boy in the dingle by his family's cottage. Dingle. Uh, is there any alternative pronunciations? No, there are no alternate pronunciations. What's the part of speech, please? It is a noun. What is the origin, please? This word is from English. Dingle. D. Dingle. D. I. N G uh, Can you repeat the word please? The word is dingle. Uh, can you repeat the meaning please? The meaning is a small, secluded, well-wooded ravine or valley. You gotta keep your hands up for us, please. Thank you. D-I-N-G-L-E, dingle. That is correct. Oh my. There we have it. All right, moving on to our next word. Our next word is groundswell. Can I get the definition? Mm -hmm. 
a movement as of political sentiment or political opinion that is unmistakably evident, but often lacking in visible leadership or overt expression. Groundswell. Groundswell. G-R-O-U-N-D-S-W-E-L-L. Groundswell. That is correct. All right, and our next word is hidebound. Could you repeat the word? Hidebound. Could I have the definition, please? Having an inflexible or ultra conservative character, bigoted, narrow, hidebound. Could I have the root, please? The languages of origin is the first part of the word is originally English. And the second part passed from Latin to French to English. Could you repeat the word, please? Hidebound. Hidebound. H-I-D-E-B-O-U-N-D. Hidebound. That is correct. Thank you. That's the end of round 12. Two spellers are out. So we have five spellers moving on to round 13. All right, here we are at lucky round 13. Had to do something with it. All right. Ready? All right. Our first word for round 13 is honeysuckle. Could you repeat the word, please? Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. H O. N-E-Y-S-U-C-K-L-E, -E, honeysuckle. That is correct. All right. Our next word is hennies. Wait, can you repeat that? Hennies. 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 All right, can you give me the definition? Hybrids between stallions and donkeys that differ from mules in having more bushy tails and having bodies disproportionately large in comparison with the legs and in being of a gentler disposition. Hennies. Uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? There are no alternate pronunciations. I'll count the language of origin, please. Probably originally of non-Indo-European origin, this word probably passed through Greek and Latin before entering English. All right, count the definition one more time, please. Hybrids between stallions and donkeys that differ from mules in having more bushy tails and having bodies disproportionately large in comparison with the legs and in being of a gentler disposition. All right, and this is a plural noun? It is a plural noun. All right. Um, can you repeat the word one more time, please? Mm -hmm. Hennies. Hennies. Um, one more time. Hennies. Okay. Hennies. H-I-N-N-I-E-S. Hennies. That is correct. All right. Our next word is lemmings. Repeat the word, please. Lemmings. Uh, can you give me the meaning, please? Small rodents of circumpular distribution that are usually colored tawny yellowish and varied with black and reddish, and notable for population fluctuations and recurrent mass migrations. Lemmings. Okay. Um, can you, is there any alternative pronunciations? There are no alternate pronunciations. Uh, what's the uh, origin? This word is from a word that went from Old Norse to Norwegian. Can you repeat the word, please? Lemmings. Can you repeat the, one, the word one more time, please? Lemmings. Can you, can you repeat it another time, please? The word is lemmings. Lemmings? 
Mm -hmm. Lemmings. Lemmings. Is this a plural? It is a plural noun. Lemmings. Uh, can you put that in a sentence, please? Lemmings stay active in the winter months by living in tunnel systems and burrowing through the snow to find food. Can you repeat the word, please? Lemmings. 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 L E. Can you repeat the word, please? Lemmings. Um, re repeat the word, please. I'm going to repeat it. Lemmings. L E M I N G S. Lemmings. That is incorrect. The correct way to spell lemmings is L E M M I N G S. Lemmings. Got out. All right. Um, like brown. Even you're still on, buddy. Thanks. Okay. Moving on to our next word. Our next word is rototiller. Can you repeat that? The word is rototiller. Can I get the definition? A power-driven implement with a series of revolving blades or prongs that break up or pulverize the soil. Rototiller. Rototiller. R-O-T-O-T-I-L-L-E-R. Rototiller. That is correct. All right. Moving on to our next word, ignorant. Thank you. Ignorant. Can I have the definition, please? Destitute of knowledge, uninstructed, unlearned. Ignorant. Ignorant. Thank you. I-G-N-O-R-A-N-T. Ignorant. That is correct. That's around 13. For spellers, we'll be moving on to round 14. Now we've got the Fab Four in round 14. Here we are. Very well done. Nice. All right. Now we're ready for the first word of the round. And the word is passengers. Passengers. P A S S E N G E R S. Passengers. That is correct. All right. Our next word is squinches. Squinches. Uh, got the definition. The definition is supports such as arches or lintels carried across the corner of a room under a superimposed mass. Squinches. Okay. Um, kind of the part of speech. It is a plural noun. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There are no alternate pronunciations. Can you repeat the word one more time then, please? Squinches. Squinches. S Q U I N C H E S squinches. That is correct. All right. Our next word is institution. Institution. I N S T I T U T I O N institution. That is correct. All right. And our next word is carper. Can I have the definition, please? One that finds fault ill-naturedly, complains querulously, or cavils sharply, especially a perverse fault finder. Carper. Could you repeat the word again? Carper. Could I have the root? The first part of this word is from an originally Scandinavian-derived English word, and the second part is an English combining form. 
carper. C A R P E R carper. That is correct. Thank you. That's the end of round 14. All four spellers are moving on to round. All right, here we are in round 15. All right, the first word is debase. I'm sorry, could you repeat the word, please? Debase. Can I get the definition? To lower in status or esteem, debase. And the word is debase? Debase. Could I get the definition one more time, please? To lower in status or esteem. The base. D. E. B. A. S. E. The base. That is correct. All right. Our next word is subside. Um, subside. All right. Can I have the definition, please? To fall into a state of quiet, to cease to rage, to settle down, subside. All right. Um, subside. S-U-B-S-I-D-E. Subside. That is correct. All right. Our next word is remand. I get the definition. The definition is to send a person charged with a crime back into custody by court order. Remand. Remand. R E M A N D. Remand. That is correct. All right. Our next word is impressive. Can I have the definition, please? Notably exciting attention or feeling or arousing awe or admiration. Impressive. Thank you. Impressive. I M P R E S S I V E. Impressive. That is correct. That's in around 15, all four spellers are moving on to round 16. Ah, sweet 16 it is. Here we are. Okay. All right. Our first word could be confused with a similar word, petitioned. It is a verb. It means made a formal written request. Petitioned. Petitioned. P-E-T-I. T-I-O-N-E-D, petitioned. That is correct. All right. Our next word is nondescript. Nondescript. Um, can I have the definition, please? The definition is lacking distinguishing characteristics or a distinctive character. Nondescript. Okay, nondescript. Um, N-O-N-D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T, nondescript. That is correct. All right. Our next word is appreciate. Appreciate. A P P R E C I A T E. Appreciate. That is correct. All right. Our next word is stupendous. Stupendous. Can I have the definition, please? Of amazing size or greatness. Stupendous. Thank you. Stupendous. S-T-U-P-E-N-D-O-U-S. -E Stupendous. That is correct. That's in round 16. All four spellers are moving on to round 17. All right, I didn't call you the Fab Four for nothing. You guys are doing great. All right, here we are, moving into round 17. Our first word is stressor. Could you repeat the word, please? Stressor. May I get the definition? 
a stimulus that causes a physical, chemical, or emotional factor, such as trauma, histamine, or fear, which causes physiological tensions that may be a contributory cause of disease. Stressor. They get the part of speech. The part of speech is a noun. Stressor. S T R E S S. O R, stressor. That is correct. All right, moving on to our next word, expeditious. Uh, can you give me the definition, please? The definition is acting or performed with promptness and efficiency, speedy, expeditious. Okay, expeditious, um, E-X-P-E-D-I-T-I-O-U-S, expeditious. That is correct. All right. This next word could be confused with a similar word, suppress. It is a verb. To stop or check the flow of, to arrest the discharge of, suppress. Suppress. S-U-P-R-E-S-S, -S, suppress. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is S-U-P-P-R-E-S-S. -S -S. All right. Our next word is sterilize. Can I have the definition, please? Uh, the definition is to free from living microorganisms, usually by the use of physical or chemical agents. Sterilize. Thank you. Sterilize. S T E R I L I Z E. Sterilize. That is correct. Thank you. That's the end of round 17. One speller's out. So three spellers are moving on to round 18. All right. Now we're down to the three musketeers. Here you are. All right, round 18. Our first word is colonialism. Colonialism, C-O-L-O-N-I-A-L-I-S-M, colonialism. That is correct. All right. Our next word is lampooned. Uh, got a part of speech, please. It is a verb. Um, okay, lampooned. Um, can I have the definition, please? Uh, the definition is made the subject of a polemic satire usually directed against an individual. Ridiculed, satirized, lampooned. Okay, lampooned. L-A-M-P-O-O-N-E-D. Lampooned. That is correct. All right. Our next word is gestation. Can I have the definition, please? The carrying of young, usually in the uterus, from conception to delivery. Pregnancy. Gestation. Can I have the language of origin, please? This word is from Latin. Could you use it in a sentence? The Indian elephant's period of gestation can be as long as 22 months. Gestation? Gestation. G E S T A T I O N, gestation. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Here we are. 
All right, beginning around 19. Our first word could be confused with a similar word, governance. It is a noun. The definition is controlling or directing influence, authority, governance. Could you repeat the word one more time, please? Governance. Governance. G O V E R N E N C E. Governance. Do what? That is incorrect. The correct spelling is G-O-V-E-R-N-A-N-C-E. -E. All right. Continuing on with our next word, the word is obstructionist. Can you repeat that? Obstructionist. Obstructionist. Count the definition, please. The definition is one that hinders progress, one that deliberately and often by indirect or delaying tactics impedes business, as in a legislative body. Obstructionist. Okay. Obstructionist. Um, o B S T R U. Wait, can I re restart? Okay. Um, obstructionist. O B. S T R U C T I O N I S T, obstructionist. That is correct. All right. For our next word, this word could be confused with a similar word, tankard. It is a noun, a tall, one handled drinking vessel, tankard. Could you repeat the definition? It is a tall, one handled drinking vessel. Could you repeat the word? Tankard. Could other part of speech? It is a noun. Tankard. T A N K E R E D. Tankard. That is incorrect. The correct spelling is. T A N K A R D, tankard. All right. So this would be the championship word. And if I'm correct, all right, if our speller spells the word correctly, then that speller will be named our champion. Now, if the speller does not spell that word correctly, then both of the other spellers are to be reinstated. And we start the next round with all three spellers. Just so everyone's clear on the procedures, correct? All right. Our next word has a homonym. The word is inhabitants. It is a plural noun, and it is people who dwell or reside permanently in a place. Inhabitants. Inhabitants, um, you said it's a plural noun? It is a plural noun. Okay, inhabitants, I-N-H-A-B-I-T-A-N-T-S, inhabitants. That is correct. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Very well done. With that spelling, then Sam, you have become the champion of this year's Spelling B. Congratulations. Thank you. Yay! We're all clapping, even if you can't hear all of our mics, we're all clapping in our little isolation booths that we have here. I believe, uh, Josh, you're the one to step in at this point. I am. Thank you, Patrick. Congratulations, Sam. Thank you. So... This is where I will say uh, congratulations, Sam, and to all of our spellers for your impressive performance in today's competition. Denise Fox will be in contact with you for your prizes and further details on your next step. You now advance to the Scripps National Spelling Bee, where you will represent your community, your school, and Channel 4. 
We can't wait to cheer you on in the national finals. Thank you to all our spellers who competed today, to their parents who supported their spelling bee journeys, and to our officials who volunteered their time to make this virtual spelling bee possible. Have a great rest of your day and week.